time for another episode of the Tech Informist Podcast. Let's begin. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin. And I'm Brad. And on this episode, we discuss the LG G6 versus Samsung S8, the pros and cons of each. People are reprogramming the Galaxy S8's Bigsby button because it currently is pointless. Did you know that water and liquid resistance are two different things? AT&T has just ruined 5G for the rest of the mobile industry. Hey, Nintendo announces the new 2DS XL. Amazon wants to check out your look. And a new delivery method for ibuprofen? Welcome back, everybody. Episode 174 of the Tech Inform is recorded on Friday, April the 28th, 2017. A lot of great things going on in the world this week, especially in your little neck of the woods. I don't know if you can talk about it or not, but... I kind of can. Okay. I mean, there's nothing really holding me back now at this point, because the cat's out of the bag, but I have just given my two weeks at my current employer, which is an auto body place, and I'm entering the tech world via Microsoft. Woot, woot. So I'm going to go work for Microsoft. So no surprise to most of our listeners, I'm sure. But for any of you who thought that I just didn't care about Microsoft anymore, wrong. Yeah. Apparently, he really likes them enough that he's going to go work for them. Now, you're going to be working at the Microsoft store here in St. Louis at the gallery. Yes. I got to start somewhere. I got to get my foot in the door. So that's where I'm going to start. So it's not like you're just up and moving to Redmond because you're just a yeah, yeah. big time guy. Yeah. I mean, I did get a few calls from Redmond. That was a little, not scary, but a little eye opening. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to go like, work for a corporation. <laughs> like serious or something, though. Yeah. So that was that was actually kind of a cool thing. But you've got, as Daryl would say, the mothership calling you to. Yeah, that, say, that was. Hey, uh, so I guess Daryl is kind of a coworker, just works in a different state. In a way, yeah. Uh, in a different state, <laughs> in a different department, doing completely different things. Daryl just celebrated his 25th, and I'm going to celebrate my first day. <laughs> So you do start in two weeks approximately from the time that we record this. Yeah, ish. Middle of Give or take a few days, days but yeah. yes. So congratulations. I know you're really looking forward to this career change. It's a huge change. It's not just yeah, going I'm from leaving the industry altogether and jumping into a new one, both feet. Let's let's do this. <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely something that you're interested in and I don't see the Microsoft store in St. Louis going anywhere anytime soon. Nah. Nah. So I'll be good. Good. Well, looking forward to seeing how you like it and what you think of it and what it's like. Definitely. Yeah. So moving on, let's step away from Microsoft for just a moment and talk a little bit about the LG G6 and the Samsung S8. I know we've talked about these phones in the past, but now you've actually had more time to spend with the S8. You, of course, own a G6. Mm -hmm. So what have you kind of noticed? I know you've been taking a lot of comparison photos and yeah the them first week Instagram. the first week that i had both phones i was extremely interested in seeing how well of photos the s8 took because it's pretty well known for its photos mm -hmm. it just made sense to kind of compare the two and and not only in my case but the commenters on instagram and facebook were all in agreement of most of the lg photos were the better ones because they had just a little more detail to them. And I don't know what that's about. Yeah, whether it's like color tone or just the colors replicating what you see with the naked eye. Right, and not only that, but just like individual blades of grass versus like a, I guess, a normal picture or or a picture that looked like it's a 720p even, I don't know. It was, the Samsung just seemed a little... A little different. It wasn't bad by any means, but it wasn't the LG G6. And which is funny to say now, because does that mean that Samsung really didn't change the camera that much? Because it's changed a little bit, but it didn't change that much. Or is the LG G6 that much better than the G5? All right, because you've got plenty of experience with that as well. Yeah. And which in its own right, it was pretty decent. It wasn't amazing, but it was pretty decent. Now, one thing... That just popped into my mind that I don't know if you've even really done yet. Have you carried your G5 with you and taken photos with both of those cameras? Uh, I have not. I should. Yeah, just to kind of get 
that feeling. So maybe yeah, that's carry around definitely gonna three happen. phones with you for a couple <laughs> yeah. days. Right. I'm definitely going to do that now that you've piqued my interest. Just to see how much the G6 is a step up over the G5. Yeah. And I definitely will, even though the megapixel count is lower, it is definitely a huge step up for whatever they did in the processing of the image. It's, it's great. Mm -hmm. Now, aside from the camera, you know, the look and feel of them are completely different. Yeah. It's kind of night and day kind of thing, even though they're both running Android. Initially, I thought that the LG G6, you know, it was kind of slippery, but then you put a case on it, it's fine. The S8 is a bar of soap. In fact, so much so that it found its way out of my back pocket while sitting on a chair and fell on concrete with no case. Thankfully, you were sitting in a chair and not standing up doing jumping jacks and it was True. in your hand and your hands hit each other and that goes flying from but six feet But this phone is all glass. Pretty much, yeah. So I thought it was broke <laughs> immediately. I'm like, well, there goes that review unit. Yeah, sorry, Verizon. We No, no, we didn't damage the phone. The phone yeah, I in picked it up, and I was like, to my surprise, I'm like, hey, huh, it's fine. It was I it. don't want to try that again. Did it land on the corner, or do you remember how it I, landed? I would imagine. Because if it fell out of your back pocket, you probably didn't see it. You felt it, and you're like, because <gasps> it's motion. so slippery. It's yeah. just the way I was sitting on a on a uh, stool versus like a chair. It just kind of found its way out and jumped out of there. I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't help that I'm at Schlafly, so it makes it look even worse. There's really no more stomach dropping sound than the. The sound of a phone hitting the floor, especially when it's made of glass, and it's not and you yours. hear it, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, that's not even my phone, but I know what that sound is. Like, what did I just do? No, but it is fine, and it's funny. I have a similar story, but it's not my story. It's, I believe, Android Central story. Nope, take that back. It's Engadget story, mm-hmm. where they were using the review unit of the LG G6, and it fell. About a story and a half without a case, <laughs> and it was fine somehow. So not quite the same scenario, but an accidental one at that. Mm-hmm. And to his surprise, no cracks, no nothing. So I think it really is the way these screens are curved and the what the glass is, Gorilla Glass 3 to 5 on you know LG and just all 5 on the S8. I think that really helps. Yeah, I'm sure it doesn't hurt at all. Because I wasn't it uh, Gorilla Glass two on the Windows Phone, or was it just straight Gorilla Glass? I can't uh, even remember it. Yeah, it's been so long. The nine twenty for our listeners who have had those, I believe it was two. I could be wrong. If he is, let him know. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, phone technology has gotten a little bit better. There, we also have a story later that will actually talk more about the Bigsby button mm-hmm. on the S8. But as of right now, it's kind of pointless. It doesn't really work, especially on Verizon. And I'm not 100% sure. I know Bigsby isn't completely finished, but it would have been nice to maybe launch with that. Because now I feel like everybody's going to forget that it even exists. Yeah, it's a little bit more gimped on Verizon for whatever variety of reasons that we'll kind of talk about in a little while. But overall, I mean, what are you finding with that? I mean, I know you still use your G6 as your daily because that's the phone that you make phone calls and text messages or other messages. Our listeners may recall me trashing the idea of a curved screen on Uh, the front. Yeah, yeah. It kind of feels good in the hand so much so that I pick it up and I'll just kind of hold it. (laughs) Hey, you don't know until you try. I guess so. But I still don't like it for the sole fact of, like I said, my big sausage fingers will kind of overlay on the screen. I can't see the screen or I get ghost clicks on things. Those are the two downsides to the nice feel to it. It is lighter than the G6, or at least it feels that way. Um, Even without the case on your G6? Yeah. it. I mean, it's, it's, it's marginal. Probably very, yeah, very it's, very it, in fact, I'm actually... Actually, without the case, it feels a little lighter. Anyway, so I don't know. They're about the same. It's so marginal. A normal customer won't really know the difference. I mean, you put the case on either one of these, it's going to gain a little heft to it anyway, which on the S8 is not bad because the regular S8, I feel, is too small. I would have to get a plus. It cramps my hand, and I'm just not a fan. But it seems like the S8 Plus is selling pretty well. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it would because – 
you get like six six point two inch display and a much smaller package than you would expect. I, we all remember the fifteen twenty, and that was just a monster. And I of phone. believe that the S eight is a five point eight, whereas the G six is a five point seven. I believe so. Very minor little difference there. Right. And they're both you know four K screens. They both have HDR. I think one of the bigger things is the LG actually has the Dolby Vision, which, as it, again, requires the chip. But they both look gorgeous in their own right. Some could argue that the S8 looks better. Some could argue that the G6 looks better. I think it's kind of preference thing again. And it has this uh, – you know how the iPhone 7 doesn't really have a button on the front? Right. Well, neither does the S8. However, there is a kind of digital button hidden under the screen kind of – so if you kind of click it, it feels like it's a button. Mm-hmm. And you almost hear it, that sound. Yeah, it sounds just like the iPhone. Yeah, it's it's kind of nice. I like that touch. I didn't know that that's why I was turning the phone on for a good day or so until I <laughs> started messing with it more and found that, oh, there's a button there. That's kind of cool. So thoughts on the fingerprint reader and like the facial recognition for unlocking the device? Facial recognition do not use because apparently you can use a photo of yourself to unlock it. Nice. So that's a security risk. So I would recommend not doing that. The iris scanner I have yet to set up. The fingerprint sensor, however, I am not really liking for many reasons. The first be- first being uh, its placement, which we've already discussed uh, yeah. last week, I believe, or the week before. The second being it does not feel like it works very well. Hmm. Compared to my LG. Now, maybe that's because LG's been putting their sensors on the back for quite a while and the button has basically stayed the same. Whereas this is kind of the first time the S8 not only is more of a rectangle instead of like a ovular shape, Mm -hmm. it's more of a rectangle or even square. So it's definitely a different shape and it's definitely in a different position. So I feel like that could be fixed in software eventually. Yeah, because with Samsung, obviously they use the home button as the fingerprint reader before, and you would use your thumb to unlock it. With its placement on the back, now instead of being horizontal, it's vertical, and it's not really convenient to use your thumb on the back of the phone. I think it kind of gives it a little bit different. And it's so it's so inconsistent hmm. because there's times that it – as long as I'm paying attention, I got to turn the phone over. I got to look where I'm putting my finger, and as soon as I do that, sure, it unlocks fine. But if I'm doing it like I normally would with my LG, yeah, and I just, just pick it up and try to find it because I I got to reach for it, fingers on the camera or something like right that. Right now, it's just not unlocking. Oh, it's on the camera. This see, it's it's hard to tell unless because I'm so used to. I don't even have to reach right for with the LG. That's it's, you know, little minute things that drive me nuts, but it is a thing of the phone. I still wish they would have moved it down further. I hope in the next iteration of the phone that that is a thing that they do because when you don't even have to reach, it just rests in the palm of your hand and it's right there. That's kind of hard to – It's just hard to ignore and you appreciate the simplicity and the quickness of it. Yeah. So you so, don't feel you have to, ooh, we've got to find it, and you're looking in the dark, kind of. All in all, they're both fantastic phones. It's kind of a preference thing. They're If you get just the normal S8, they're priced pretty much the same right now. You know, the S8 obviously has the better chip, but the LG has, I would argue, a better camera. So there's there's pros and cons to each. Mm-hmm. Have you found much of a difference if you've closed all the apps, cleared them all out of the recent apps list, and you just open the same app, tap both So I did that the same time. side by side. To the trained eye, I think you would notice a hair difference, but it's so marginal. In which so, favor? Oh, in the S8 okay. because it's a faster chip. But it's so marginal and it's so little that it you would be fine with either pick. There is no real benefit to having the 835 other than quick charge for and eventually 5G, but that's not launching till 2019 maybe? Yeah, like true 5G. Right, which we'll talk about later, later as well. So with that quick charge 4, are you noticing a difference? Are you oh using my the God, included it's charger? 
Is it? it is quick, quick. Um, yeah, I that is that's awesome. The quick charge four, I'm loving that. But you know, quick charge three is still nice, and it does not feel completely outdated. But quick charge four, oh, yeah, it's the future, and the future is now. Yeah, here it comes. I should try to find one of my wireless chargers just to see, you know, because they both have wireless charging. It's just there's no point in using it when you've got quick charge. Again, whoever the consortiums are behind the quick or the um, wireless Wireless charging, charging, you need to figure your thing out because otherwise nobody cares. Just saying. So, yeah, I'm still not. I mean, I like the idea of. Wireless charging. I absolutely. I but used to here. I'm like, yeah, I don't really need it too bad. Yeah, I could use it where my phone's sitting right now. That would be great. But yeah, it's like, eh. But I used to like champion wireless charging. Well, you were back in the on. Windows Phone days. But now we've achieved a different level of charging, a much faster level of charging. Whereas back in the day, there was no such thing as quick charging. So I think that has a lot to play with it. If also if they can get wireless charging to work across the room or halfway across the room that might be a different story because i could be sitting here in this seat the charger could be plugged in i don't know across the room and it could still be charging that could be different that could be a game changer which is what i believe they're talking about with apple where it doesn't have to be like directly on it just within a reasonable proximity it's still picking up some kind of charge how are they doing that but I mean, those are all real possibilities, but I feel until that happens, I just would have rather have had the DAC in the LG, and I mean, the Samsung's got everything in it. I don't think it has quite the beefy DAC that the LG is included in most countries, but it's still, you know, it puts out fine sound. Everything seems fine with it. You know, Mm -hmm. it is a solid phone. It is a good phone. I personally just prefer the LG, mostly because I like a lot of their stock stuff more although i do use nova launcher on it and right now i'm kind of testing microsoft's all all of microsoft's um launchers and whatnot on the s8 being as you can go and pick one up from the microsoft store so right the microsoft edition yes version of the galaxy s8 and the s8 plus interesting so honestly i mean if you want a recommendation i say both of them (laughs) yeah it's it you're splitting hairs. You just have to determine what really feels best to you. And what... Yeah, it's so incremental, more so than I thought it would be. I really thought that the S8 was going to have much more speed. But this kind of culture of the Internet where we just react instead of think and then react, they're like, oh, it's got an 821, well, therefore it's garbage. Uh, I'm here to tell you that that's not the case, and I'm using both of them right now, so... Mm-hmm. What have you noticed battery life wise? I mean, I know it's tough to get a true comparison because you I'm can't... not. Yeah, it's not like I, this is my actual daily driver. However, it is fantastic. I have left it off the charger for two days and it sits at like eighty percent. And I've ran podcasts on it all day and it will maybe drop down into the seventies. Mm-hmm. But well, it's not like you're playing a bunch of games and things like that. Which, which I you normally play on both. I um, normally don't play a lot of games mobily, mm-hmm. but. That being said, you know, it definitely has some horsepower, but it, the battery on it, even though it's 300 less than the LG, it definitely holds up. So no worries there, even if you get that S8. Well, I know you've got it for a little bit more time, and I know I get to spend I was gonna a say, week I'd or so with it. be curious to see what your thoughts are on mm-hmm. it. It'll be fun to try. No rush, no rush. Plenty of things to do. Plenty of things to do. <laughs> Speaking of that Galaxy S8, you mentioned the Bigsby button can be reprogrammed to use other assistants and things like that. Yes, which I did immediately because I was even thinking about this. Like, man, it would be great if that Bigsby button would work. I could try their new assistant out, give it a shot. Well, I can't because it doesn't work. So there's this wonderful, wonderful app called Bigsby Remapper. And essentially, when you hit the Bigsby button, it will open up whatever app you put into place of it. Now, it's not as graceful as it sounds. It kind of launches Bigsby, then closes it, and then launches something else. 
but it still gives you kind of that one button press kind of feel. So, like I said, I was using a bunch of Microsoft stuff. I put Cortana on it because why not? It's kind of the you know champion of Microsoft right now for um, when it comes to Android phones because they sort of have a partnership with Samsung somehow. So I figure, hey, I'm going to make this a Microsoft phone through and through. So one button press, Cortana, or actually it's a, like a double click, I guess. I don't know. I'll have to try that a couple times. But Cortana launches right now on my phone, so it's kind of cool. And I like the fact that people have been able to create apps for this, and I think they were able to get it get some apps out there within a week. It's not like this is from Samsung. This is these are all independent developers, app, yeah. yeah. And obviously you're using a free application, correct? I believe all of these listed in the article are free, including I think I this one I found accidentally versus the ones that are listed, but I prefer this one quite a bit. And again, it's it's actually in the show notes uh, later on. But Bigsby Remapper, so hmm. nice. I I really do want to try Bigsby, but I f- feel it will not be ready in time by the time we have to give this back. So, listeners, if you did get an S8 or you are planning on getting an S8, I really am curious about your thoughts on Bigsby when it is available. I wonder if Samsung can shut this down with a future update. Being as it seems to be such a simple app, I don't think so. Because the way it works. so right, a, Because it opens Bigsby. It opens Bigsby. But then closes it. Immediately closes it, but then opens up another program. So Whatever what I'm thinking is, is it's a script that once Bigsby launches, closes it, or close it, and then open this app. Whatever Basically, that app it's just is. just if this, then that kind of Exactly. Thing. Which is why so many developers were... It's like, oh, no brainer. I yeah. can do this in like 20 minutes. Yeah. If this opens... Close it and then open that. Which also, being as they're such simple apps, you know, they don't take up a lot of room and they launch quickly. I know we talked within the last month or so more about IP68, the ratings and stuff like that, about water and dust resistance and all that jazz. And we know that the G6, the S8 is water resistance, but there's a difference between water and liquid Liquid. resistance and good old jerry hildebrand of android central put out a really nice article kind of explaining this that liquids are different from regular water because it has other things dissolve into them i never really considered this till i read this i i'm the same way because water is a liquid because that's what you're taught in science in school Mm -hmm. water is a liquid it's you know, yada, yada, yada. I don't want to get into the whole science instruction here. Yes, however, it has solids in it. Exactly. For these other liquids we're talking about. So I was curious, and I looked up how much... So in beer, beer is about 95% water. So I feel if you spilled a beer on your phone, you would probably be better off than spilling soda on your phone. Right, because obviously sodas... You can Corn, tell there's a big syrup, sugar, yeah. and That's dyes. It's sticky. Yeah. This is all the syrup and stuff that lets you know, man, that wasn't soda. That, or that wasn't water. That's got to be soda or something else because it's all sticky and gooey. And, ugh. So that's one thing. You don't want to be spilling beer. You don't want to be spilling soda or milk. champagne or mi- milk. Orange God. juice, you know. Oh, God. No, not the orange <laughs> juice. You definitely don't want to spill one of those unicorn Starbucks drinks on there and get all that glitter. And yeah, your phone will get diabetes. Stuff. <laughs> diabetes and stuff like that. But distilled water is even different because it doesn't have all the... Particulates. Yeah, the dissolved minerals and it can kind of get through. So it's even thinner, we'll say. Right than regular tap water because tap water has got some calcium and some other minerals that have been added to it to kind of help a variety of things. Hot water, on the other hand, also can loosen adhesives and stuff like that. That's why you get something sticky on your hands, it's going to come off a lot faster when you wash it in your hands in hot water than cold water. Like when you're doing the dishes. Exactly. It's going to help get the baked on and the dried cheese and all that other stuff that gets all over So there. I shouldn't dip my phone in coffee. Got it. No, 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 no. No, because 
cups. A lot of people want to doctor up their coffee with sugars and creamers and stuff like that. That's Fresh silicone. Too. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's not like a cookie where you're dipping it into your hot chocolate and mm, or your milk. Cookies and milk. Sounds good. Anyway, just He still does go on to mention wary. that if any of these things do happen, rinse it off with a about room temperature water even cold water i would imagine would work fine but um when you get into the stickier stuff like you were saying you don't want it to be hot but you don't want it to be cold either so probably about lukewarm just rinse it off real um you know normal none of the high pressure stuff because it's not meant for that so just normal tap water would be fine and i do like one of the comments and i know you just stay out of the comment section. <laughs> but there's one comment from Android Central member Crashy Turbo. I'm going to be spelling that wrong. It says, this sucks. I usually like to sit with my phone in my bowl of cereal and read the news. Guess I have to be more careful now. <laughs> well, that's funny. Very nice. Everybody's a comedian. Everybody's a comedian on the internet. Hashtag sarcasm. <laughs> As we kind of touched on just briefly a little while ago about 5G, a post came out this week about AT&T ruining 5G for the rest of the mobile industry. Now, you might ask yourself, well, how did they ruin 5G for everyone? Well, it's not even available yet. Well, exactly. That's just it. They sort of launched a 5G evolution saying, hey, we have 5G evolution. But what does that mean? That means... 4G eventually is going to become 5G, but 5G doesn't come out till 2019, 2020. That's kind of when yeah. everything's really supposed to roll out and be ready to roll. So we're a couple years away yet, and yet somehow they're launching 5G. How does that work? It doesn't. Here's the thing. Don't buy into the snake oil salesman garbage that they're trying to feed you. They're just trying to one-up the industry, and they're trying to get you to change to say, oh, our number's bigger than yours, so you should come here. Basically. Obviously, most customers will see through that. Some will not, and that's why we're here to inform our listeners, to inform their less tech-savvy family members. Right, that the people are looking to, man, I think I'm going to go to AT&T just because of that. Right. They use that as the the carrot that they're chasing. Yeah. It's a carrot that they're never going to reach. Exactly. Um, But with the S8, it is the first... 5G capable phone, however, again, there is no 5G yet, so I guess we'll be waiting in the meantime Mm -hmm. for real 5G to launch. And it's not really the first time that AT&T has kind of done something like this, because there was the, was it the 4G HSPA Plus, I think, that AT&T started rolling out. So T-Mobile does the Plus, I believe. Mm. And... Yeah, so like you said, it's the HSPA, whatever the whole long string of it is, and it's plus, and it's like, oh, well, that's a little better. Right. But it was like before LTE was truly rolled out. Right. Before it was truly 4G LTE, it was like 4G HSPA plus and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> so it's not the first time that they've kind of played the shell game where they're sleight of hand and stuff like that. <laughs> right. But it is what it is. I don't really like the logo of this either, the 5G uh, no. Evolution. Yeah, the 5 doesn't have a very long bill on his hat. And neither does the G. The G doesn't even get over there. It looks more like a wheelchair. Oh, goodness. It looks kind of like a handicap symbol. Huh. Only without the person sitting in it. Now, I'm not a uh, logo designer of any kind. but um, <laughs> I'm far from that myself. This doesn't look good, so maybe reconsider. Maybe put the five above the G and switch it around. They'll they'll figure it out. But this campaign is promoting this new quote unquote five G evolution network that's supposed to be rolling out in Austin and soon Indianapolis, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, Nashville, and San Francisco first. Uh huh. Again, it's still entirely based on four G LTE, so there's really nothing in its current incarnation. It has to do with what will eventually become true 5G. It's all marketing. Mm-hmm. Marketing, folks. Yep. Marketing. Snake oil. As a fan of Nintendo. Who you're us? a fan of Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, we both enjoy Nintendo, even though they make some questionable decisions. 
you have been more of the mobile gamer when it comes to Nintendo and their DS line. Mm, yeah. So for you, this announcement recently of the new 2DS XL, which, God, again, this these long names, just, I don't understand the whole point of this. Two things with this. So they have a 2DS, and it's that big wedge that looks like you could put it on the end of a handle and make an axe out of it. Yeah, that thing's garbage. This thing is amazing. It's an XL. There's just one line. They streamlined it. There's two colors. One's black and blue, and the other's white and orange. I kind of wish they would have switched the orange and the blue, because I think that would have looked killer, like an orange and black and a blue and white. But that's just me oh, personally. Yeah, the black with the orange buttons would have really looked hot. Just saying. Or orange with black buttons. I might have to get two and take them apart and switch them. Anyway. Or blue with white. Either way, any of those color combinations yeah. would have looked fantastic. Now, they're not terrible looking. They just, in my mind, and what I prefer, they clash a little. However, the device itself, fantastic idea. Get rid of the 3D. Make it $50 cheaper. It can run all of the normal games that it normally would run, even some of the Super Nintendo games that you have to have the new, in quotations, DS for, because it has that you know little bit faster chip and whatnot. But it starts at one forty nine ninety nine or something like that. Two colors, like I said, and instead of just the kind of candy bar form factor of the old 2ds it actually has a flip case to protect yeah. the screen Clamshell. yeah it closes and yes it's so good i love this so this is good on nintendo this sort of tells two stories one they still care about the 3ds and two they don't care about 3d but do we really need another ds kids some kids are maybe getting their first console ever, and eventually it's like, oh, well, mom and dad knows, hey, Game Boy's kid-friendly, so let's get them a Game Boy. Oh, what's the new Game Boy? Oh, well, they have this new 3DS, but it's a 2DS, and it's a clamshell, and it's an XL, and it does everything that the normal one does. It's just $50 cheaper and doesn't do 3D. Right, so you lose out on the 3D experience, which... Blech. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. It's like, Is that really something that's going to make gameplay that much more enjoyable probably not so i have played a few games in the 3d and i'm not i mean it's it's a cool tech it's neat but i'm just not convinced on it that's all so am i seeing this right that it looks like there's a webcam there is that like a little web camera um there it were right in like the middle the there hinge, yeah, next not... to the mics and stuff not 100 percent for sure i think because it looks I like a little camera. I think that camera is used for one of the AR games, or or one of the, or take even taking your picture. Maybe I can't remember because I thought that those were on the back. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Like I said, it does look nice, and in that uh, kind of like analog stick there in the top left, a C stick. Yeah, yeah. That looks like it could really be comfortable. Yeah, the nubbin works pretty good. Mm -hmm, nubbin. Yeah, well, what else are you gonna call it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it works pretty good. But um, it not as good as the circle pad. The circle pad is just fantastic, right? And this thing's half the price of the Nintendo Switch, so I can understand why parents wouldn't want to get them a three hundred dollar unit. And you know, it's three. Is it three hundred or three fifty? Why? Why is my memory three hundred? It's two ninety nine. Well, and also because of all the bundles, you don't even know what it starts at. That's true. Because yeah. Anyway. But yeah, it's two ninety nine, which that is still a great portable device. It is. Right? Yeah. I mean, I enjoy it. Don't get to play it as much. As I, I contemplated like to. trading in my three DS this week for one, but I'm probably better not. So. Yeah, you want to hang on to your three DS for a little while. Yeah, we'll see. So, again, things half the price of the Nintendo Switch, but mm -hmm. it shows that they're not, they just want to take everything portable. Well, the last time they had a, in quotations, three pillar kind of situation um, was the old Game Boy, the Game Boy Advanced, and then obviously their normal console at the time, which I think was the GameCube. Probably. I well, so. right now we have, you know, the 3DS, we have the Switch, 
and there was one other in there and it's sort of this like oh well we're not going to get rid of the 3ds don't worry and you know the switch isn't going to replace mobile gaming don't worry and i think this is kind of them making true to their word that's like here's you know the console if you want to take it on the run you can and here's the portable gaming thing that is half the the price what? Well, yeah, it, it's yeah. half the price is right. what I'm trying to get at. So that's good. I'm I'm glad to see this because for a while I was kind of leery that they were really going to keep it around. Yeah, we'll see how this thing sells. I'm sure it'll sell good and stuff like that. It'll be a great little holiday gadget to get for people. And it comes out July 28th. So that's the same day that Hey Pikmin and Miitopia. Ooh, Miitopia. Ah. Yeah, there you go. With some more of those Nintendo Miis. Yeah, if you've sat out of the 3DS line and you were still looking to get in, this would be the spot to do it. You're not missing much on the 3D. Again, you're paying $50 cheaper than the 3DS, and you still get a clamshell form factor, so Mm -hmm. you win all around. This came out earlier this week, and I'm still trying to figure out what Amazon really wants to do with this because... They want to watch you get dressed. (laughs) It's kind of what it seems like. It's really kind of creepy creepy in a way. So Amazon this week announced a $199 Echo called the Echo Look. So again, it's using the Amazon Alexa Assistant, AI, whatever. And it wants to kind of give you this opportunity to snap pictures of the way that you're dressed and it's going to be incorporated with a bunch of like style assistants and stuff like that. I don't know. Obviously as a guy, I don't necessarily care. It's definitely not for me. I would imagine it's not for me because I have my wife to tell me, Hey, that doesn't look right. (laughs) And she is a fashion major, just saying. So I'm not sure that, and it, it just sounds creepy too. So very, While Echo is doing great, this might make them think, oh, Amazon, you're a little creepy sometimes. Yeah, this is like taking it to a whole new level. And 199? Oof. I don't think so. And it's a good thing they didn't try to announce this back on April 1st because you would have been like, (laughs) even though they announced it the other day, I was still, my first thought was, wait a second, is this just something that somebody scheduled an April Fool's joke wrong? (laughs) And... It's just now coming out. They forgot they'd scheduled it. or This, I think, would have went over better as an April Fool's. Exactly. Because then you could have dismissed it and then found out it was real later, kind of like the uh, dash buttons they did uh, previous years ago. Again, $199 goes on sale probably within a month. I'm trying to figure this thing out and how they're going to be doing secure because you know, it's still a voice assistant, so you can... Have it take a picture. You can kind of shoot a video as you spin around to get the full view and send it to your friends. Hey, you know, how does this look? And stuff like that. I I don't know. Again, like I said, it's definitely not for me. And I would imagine it's probably not for the great majority of people listening either. So I'm curious to know if you've got an idea of what this might be able to be used for that we're not seeing. Obviously, this is focused on clothes and clothing because Amazon wants to be in the middle of everything. Yeah. They want to sell you everything they can. If you can think of some possibly good uses for this, I'd be kind of curious to know what some of your suggestions are. It's just creepy. I think everybody out there has all had headaches. Some people like ibuprofen. Some people like aspirin. Some people like things like Aleve. And caffeine. Caffeine, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a variety of reasons why people get headaches, whether you haven't eaten for a while and you're starting to get a little hangry and you're just missing out on certain nutrients and yeah. stuff like that. An interesting information came out this week, and this is on a website called newatlas.com. Talking about a new way for, kind of like a new coating that's going to help ibuprofen the length of time that it is actually effective and it can extend the speed of ibuprofen as it dissolves and actually does what it's intended to do, be a pain reliever and help take care of some inflammation and 
joints and things like that. So something called MOFs, which are Metal Organic Frameworks. They've quietly been changing the world, and single atom thick cousin is what is most well known. So researchers at Northwestern University have used these MOFs to extend the speed and duration of ibuprofen, which obviously can help give better pain relief for all of us. Sometimes you feel, like with me and my wife, we'll say she wants some ibuprofen. I'm like, okay, so is this a a one, a two? Do you need three ibuprofen? Is the pain like that? A uh, two. So here you might be able to just get away with one because it might last longer and therefore be more effective, And which obviously using a lot of ibuprofen is not good on can't remember if it's kidneys or liver. I would imagine your liver being as it has to filter it. Yeah. It's obviously you don't want to take a whole lot of ibuprofen because, you know, stuff's just not good. Yeah. Myself, personally, I try not to take any ever unless yeah. it is excruciating, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen very often, but occasionally. Yeah. So MOFs have been frequently discussed as a potential drug delivery vehicle, which very few instances of... In vivo studies involving MOFs have been reported to date, and that's from what the researchers say. Tests, obviously, they're all conducted on mice. That the ibuprofen trapped in the MOF reached the bloodstream within 10 to 20 minutes, which is about the same time it takes for ibuprofen salts that are found in liquid gel preparations to work. I'm personally not a big liquid gel person. I like the regular hard pill version. I guess I'm indifferent. I never tablet, really thought about it. Tablet versus capsule versus liquid gel. I, yeah, just something about the liquid gels I just don't like. So in the dosages given to the mice, it's half-life clocked in at two hours versus the usual half-life of one hour for ibuprofen salts. We'll see. Obviously, they're going to be continue doing all this research to try to make things more efficient and mm -hmm. just more effective because, you know, and a lot of reasons for getting headaches are just typical joint pain. And anything that's going to help make this more effective, yeah, great. All right, so this probably won't be a long discussion for this week end rant, but something came out the other day that kind of stood out to me, and I understand to a point why they thought of this. But I don't understand why they thought of this in this instance. In this context. Right. So I'm all about animals. Heck yeah. And treating them with respect. Because, again, we're humans. We're supposed to be the most compassionate, the most mentally advanced species on the planet. The where we can to think. <laughs> Which is definitely not always the case. So I, it just drives me up the wall when I see people that abuse animals and things like that because it's not like a bear is coming to try to attack you and you just go, oh, no, I can't try to fight back. That's a little bit different. Uh, animal attacks are different from being compassionate towards animals. Exactly. If a, if a dog is like viciously attacking somebody, then yeah, you need to take the dog down. But if it's just a dog that's just laying out in the yard, rolling around on its back in the grass and just having a good time playing with toys, don't hurt the dog. The dog's not doing anything to anybody. Mm -hmm. So animal activists have succeeded apparently in getting the boxing kangaroo, Roger Jr., removed from the upcoming Western version of Tekken 7. What a surprise. So if you're a fan of the Tekken series of video games, it's been around for years. Obviously, they're on Tekken 7. So this was originally, I believe, on like PlayStation way, way back in arcades and stuff like that. The Kangaroo has been in the Tekken series for a number of iterations. There's also a bear. There's also a panda that... You know, a little fighting bear and fighting panda, which obviously they're much bigger than a kangaroo, but his group has been able to get a kangaroo pulled. 
And the reason why the bear is staying in the game is because the bear can be stronger than a human. So this leads me to kind of question, if you're so worried about, you know, the def- kangaroo being defenseless right i don't know if you know this but kangaroos are pretty mean yeah all you gotta do is just go to youtube for that and you'll find plenty <laughs> of videos about that or hey go to the zoo and go to the kangaroo exhibit and you'll find them fighting each other there mm-hmm. we've sat and watched them entertain each other this game's perfect for kangaroos they're, exactly. they're always like in quotations boxing each other you know? exactly. it, here's the thing these animals in this pixelated game are doing things that animals don't do in the real world, and this is a game. Well, there's been boxing kangaroos in the past. I mean, back in the early yeah. you know, in the 1900s and stuff like that. You'd I don't know have... if this game is supposed to be, like, insensitive towards that. So, I mean, what's next? Are we going to start banning Mario games because he steps on, he jumps on turtles and stuff like that? Right. That's, That's animal abuse. Same, I mean, pull same Mario. concept, right? Yeah. So why is this targeted versus that? Is it because of the realism of the graphics? Or is it just because they picked this game? Or, you know, if you really want to go way back, you know, you look at Donkey Kong. Mario beaten up on a gorilla. Right, by crossing over in some of those maps where he Donkey Kong falls on his head. Mm-hmm. That's dangerous. You can't have that. That's abuse to a gorilla. You can't do that. Or, what about the animals that you hunt in things like uh, Zelda or Tomb or, Raider? Or Deer Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my God, the Deer Hunter game, that's horrible. Donkey Kong Country, going around jumping on alligators and all kinds of other I animals. would not jump on an alligator, Kevin. No. <laughs> Apparently some people, obviously nobody does because they didn't feel that was necessary to pull. It's just silly and uh, it just it's aggravating. Yeah, when we go to stand for things, sometimes we have to take that 50,000-foot view and realize what we're actually doing. In this case, I I see their good intentions, maybe, <laughs> but I don't think this was the right course of action. I think the developers should have stood up to them and been like, no, this is a game. This is not about beating up animals. That's not the point. The same way that, you know, like, as we just mentioned, All other games that have animals in them, you don't even take a second look at. How is that different? Mm -hmm. I've never once played Tekken and thought, awesome, I get to beat up the kangaroo. (laughs) Right. I mean, It's more like, I want to be the kangaroo to beat up the person. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But I don't know. I'm just saying. And it's the same way as, you know, we've had a lot of uh, social, social justice warriors, you know, speaking out against Ghost in the Shell, right? Mm. Well, it turns out the creator, a Japanese man, loves the movie. And so does Japan. In fact, it did so well in Japan, it kind of makes America look stupid now. Because guess what? We thought we were standing up for something that was right. Maybe we should. We failed to realize that we should have asked them first if it was wrong. Yeah, usually. So now we're hurting people's paychecks and money because we were standing up for what we thought was right. Now... Maybe I'm out of line a little bit because I, I am. I'm a male. I'm white. I don't see these things. But when the party that it affects says it's fine, doesn't that make it fine? Just that's just annoying. Anyway, rant over. All right, it's time for this week's app entertainment and hardware picks. And first up, we've got two items from friend of the show Daryl Pritchard. Who sent us the idea of the book called Shattered, Inside Hillary Clinton's Doomed Campaign. And if you get on Amazon, you will see there's no shortage of books kind of trying to detail and explain what happened. How did it happen that the overwhelming, seemed like favorite, ended up losing to Donald Trump? Yeah, it's a fascinating story really i mean Mm -hmm. to get down to the nitty-gritty of it it there's a lot to kind of unpack there and i think it would again make for a good book um regardless of who you voted for who you like the story itself is fascinating 
Right. So it's very interesting. It's like, how did that really happen? Because it, if you've watched the South Park season that completed, <laughs> it kind of goes right along with it where it seemed like Donald Trump was, by default, if you kind of use some basic common sense and things like that, and I don't mean to sound disparaging here, there were a lot of things that Donald Trump did during the campaign that you're like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that. Because most of the time people would be like, uh, yeah, I don't think, grab him by the blah, doing this and mocking the nah, handicap reporter and stuff, or reporter, I can't even remember exactly who the person was. But some of this stuff you just, like, we're really going to hire not hire essentially yeah vote hire yeah same it's kind of the yeah. same thing you're hiring them with your votes somebody that has done this in the past and i know everybody's past is that's the past but it kind of gives you a good idea of kind of who the person is and everybody can say oh well i've changed i've matured and that's still kind of who you are because you're just better at how you act in public <laughs> Be behind the scenes is always totally different because People's online persona versus their offline persona is oftentimes two completely different people. But anyway, I think this would be a interesting book. It's got a composite of three out of five stars out of I'm 268 sure, reviews. I'm sure a lot of those are from people mad about making fun of – well, not making fun of – unpacking why she lost. Mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of those bad reviews come from. Yeah. In fact, I bet we could surf through there and find those. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But um, that that's not the way to rate something like this. That You know, again, regardless who you voted for, that doesn't make it a bad book. I mean, what makes it a bad book is if it's put together not well or it isn't cohesive to the storyline or it's just all over the place or maybe – If it's just the – just a thrown together BS thing for a money grab. Exactly. And again, not saying that it is because I've never read it, but I feel that it is an interesting story that should be looked at because, mm -hmm. regardless of which side you're on, that kind of affects both sides. Yeah. A story of this magnitude. I mean, it's one of the, the biggest stories that I can think of, especially when it comes to political and presidential elections. Yeah. Is something that I had no idea that. I mean, I remember I was walking back from lunch one day talking about, and this was way back before, you know, during primaries and stuff like that. I said, well, there's reasons I can see Trump getting the nomination. I could see where he could actually win based on ABC. Right, right. But then XYZ comes out, and you're like, Oh, well, maybe not. I don't think the majority of the Republican Party that he switched to. So, I mean, because, again, kind of like Eric Greitens in the state of Missouri, eh, as a Democrat, they weren't going to win the Democratic nomination for president or governor. Mm -hmm. So they had to switch parties to like get there. That's hilarious. So you kind of have to quote-unquote, change your beliefs. And I don't know if you want to consider that kind of selling out. But it's interesting, though, that this that election that both Greitens and Trump had switched political parties and affiliations to get to the office that they got elected to. There's things that Donald Trump is doing or has done that I'm like, yeah, that would actually be good for the country. Mm -hmm. But there's just as many, if not more, that I go, what the? are you doing it's so stupid but again it's politics and i don't completely understand everything because i don't really follow it super closely as closely as i probably should and as closely as the great majority of americans probably should they just read news headlines and form your opinion based on the headlines <laughs> not what's actually in the story and then the people that want to get on their soapboxes they don't get involved so i typically don't get on a whole lot of soapboxes that's why I like listening to NPR because they're right down the middle and they show both sides whether you want to hear it or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that is good for America right now. We're too polarized and polarized politics is very bad. This is the most polarized that I've seen this country in my lifetime. And I'm yep. not as old as 
all of our listeners, but I'm getting up there. But I've seen a lot in politics, and you know, my dad was involved in politics. He ran for a state representative position back in the early 80s. So I've been in politics and hospitality rooms and around all this stuff for my entire life. I've seen a lot of the inside and behind the scenes and stuff like that. That I don't know, I kind of think it gives me a little bit of credibility to a point. Not as much as somebody that went for political science or really studied all this in school, but eh, I have some idea of what I'm kind of talking about. But man, we spent an awful lot of time on a book. <laughs> Moving on, the next thing that he sent over was the film The Founder, which is the story of Ray Kroc, who is a salesman who turned two brothers, the McDonald's brothers, the innovative fast food eatery, into one of the biggest restaurant businesses in the world with a combination of ambition, persistence, and ruthlessness. This looks fun. I want to I watch this. I know. It's been a movie that once... My wife and I saw the preview trailer. I don't even remember what movie it was in front of. We're like, ooh, I've got to watch that. And I still haven't watched this movie. It's on Netflix, right? No, I don't think it's on Netflix yet. I know it's Shucks. available on Amazon. Amazon to rent. Yeah. And we were going to rent it over the weekend, but we ended up watching something different. So, again, I like Michael Keaton, so I want to still see this. And fun fact, my wife got to actually swim in Ray Kroc's pool when, because my mother-in-law, who I'd never met because she had passed away before I even met my wife, she somehow knew Ray Kroc and she had spent some time and lived in California because I've actually got some in-laws that live in California huh. and had the opportunity to swim in his pool when Ray Kroc was there. So, like, they're in the pool, not like a uh, pedophile, perverted kind of swimming, because, you know, she was only, like, five or six. Yeah. But it's still kind of cool that, like, you met Ray Kroc, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, he was a really nice guy. Like, I guess if you're six, and the guy's, like, this McDonald's person, then you're, like, yeah. So, I'm, and I know it's going to get people hating again, I like McDonald's. I have no problem with McDonald's. Same. I, I enjoy the food. It's not like something that I need to eat every day, but... I don't know. It's fine. Do what you want, but I like McDonald's, so... Yeah. Shove yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, I would say almost anything in moderation. Exactly. Okay. And that's that's the point. So, like, you don't eat McDonald's every day, but right. hey, maybe I want to go there and get a Big Mac every once in a while. I had a... Quarter pounder with cheese and fries less. Normally, I don't get the fries. But, I mean, I love the fries, but they usually don't. My stomach usually uh, don't agree with them. Uh, a little bit of a guilty pleasure, I guess. But man, the quarter pounder just mm, yum yum. And something about their fountain double coke cheeseburger is good. Oh yeah, and the coke double cheeseburger and a coke or um, a Big Mac. Yeah. If you're not swinging into the McDonald's drive-through, then we have failed you. Yep. <laughs> we have failed you. Right now, they've even got those little Nintendo toys for the Happy Meal. Oh, no. So you can go get your little Mario. I'm going to go get like 10 Happy Meals. <laughs> right. See, the neat thing is you don't have to buy all the food. You can just buy the toy separately. But, Kevin, I want to feel like I'm six again. I understand. You get that little bitty bag of fries and a little bitty cheeseburger. Now you can get apple slices or some like yogurt or something else. Oh, no. Give me the fatty Healthy stuff. Healthy choices. <laughs> Healthy choices. I'm going to die one day. A little salad in your little Happy Meal. Anyway, I, it's definitely a movie that I want to see. It's got a 7.2 out of 10 on IMDb. I still need to see it. Yeah. Ugh. Definitely. So we've talked enough about Samsung, but real quick, I did want to mention that in the show notes, we will have the Bigsby Button Remapper app in the show notes. So you can go and download it and get it for your S8 or S8+. Plus. It really can change the game for you, for your phone, really. It can launch any app. It even has some presets, such as flashlights, cameras, and things like that. But I chose Cortana because, again, I'm kind of trying this whole Microsoft thing on an Android platform, and it's actually going kind of cool. Just keeping this short, but you can go and download that. It will be in the show notes. Bigsby Button Remapper. The next Call of Duty World War II trailer is available to watch and look at, and you can even pre-order. 
the digital and physical copies of Call of Duty World War II, which is available in like November 3rd or something yes. like Yes. So I believe you saw the trailer? Oh, yeah. What do you think? Is this the game? Is this a game to get? Is this a game to jump back into Call of Duty if you've left the series for a while? Visually, it looks great. I'm curious to know about the gameplay. Obviously, it's not going to have jetpacks and stuff like that. It's going to yeah. be more... Boots battle. on the ground. Yeah, it's going to be like old school Call of Duty. It seems like they're also incorporating vehicles a little more, from what I understand. Yeah, because back in you know, Call of Duty's, in my opinion, heyday, it was just all World War Two stuff. and Like boots on the ground, but they didn't use too many vehicles back in the No, heyday. you would periodically ride in specific vehicles. During the was, campaign and yeah, such. Yeah, very short interactions with them. Yeah. Where here it looks like there's going to be all sorts of interaction with planes and Might be tanks a... and stuff like that. And I know you love tanks because you play yeah. World of Tanks all the time. Might be taking a page out of uh, Battlefield's book. It could be, yeah. And but obviously that, Battlefield good, 1 was a successful game so far. I'm I'm actually kind of excited for this one. Mm-hmm. I'm glad they're returning to their roots. This is more of the Call of Duty that I like and identify with other than the original Modern Warfare that came's awesome. Mm-hmm. The futuristic stuff, I, I get why they would want to kind of venture into that, but I think Destiny has them covered for a while. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And even things like Titanfall, which also has a new DLC that came out with a new map and some other little things came out on the 25th. Mm-hmm. So that like came out of nowhere. I'm like, wow, I did because they just released a DLC, seemed like just a few weeks. Ago. And that was free for the first one. So. They're all free. So. Never mind. <laughs> exactly, which is, again, another great reason for Titanfall 2 to be a game you need to have if you're in first-person shooters. It's one of the best first-person shooters that nobody's playing right now. Yeah, I wish I had more time. <laughs> Speaking of not having enough time, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is now available for the Nintendo Switch worldwide. Today. Digital and physical. As we record. As we record. I have yet to buy it, again, because of time constraints. I just don't have as much time as I'd like to have. But I probably will pick it up sometime this weekend. I'm still debating physical or digital for this. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you got some time. A little bit of time. Got some time to think about. I mean, it's not a game that I would ever resell. Right. It'd be a game that I would keep, just like Legend of Zelda. I'm not going to sell that game, but I bought it physical. One, two, Switch, I got digitally. I plan on going all digital. Yeah. When I do eventually get a Switch. Whenever that is. Yeah. I don't know it's the whole game save thing kind of worries me, but then again, it's like pretty much everything's unlocked at the start from this Mario Kart from what I've been reading. No, oh, cool. So it's not like you need to, ooh, man, I've Grind unlocked up. all the characters, yeah. and now, oh, man, I lost my characters, and... Yeah, it's not the same as like save states on Zelda. Mm-hmm. Very important stuff. Anyway, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is available for the Nintendo Switch. Let us know if you've picked it up and what you think of it. And maybe we'll put some friend codes in the show notes, which I'd have to look mine up again because, again, you can't just search for a person by the name. So it's is it like stupid. this long string of... Characters, yeah, like, it's like twelve or something characters, and there's an S W in the front. Like, Come on, Nintendo, it's 2017. Should have this taken care of by now. And it's time for beer pick of the week. Schlafly is a brewery that I've talked about many times, and well, here I am again. Technically, it's called the St. Louis Brewery, but we know them as Schlafly. And this time it is about the best stout that they have ever made. And by that, I mean the variant. Mm. It is a stout that is aged in port barrels on cocoa nibs. It's super smooth, chocolatey, kind of has like a um, not quite raspberry flavor, but heading in that direction because of the port barrels. Oh my god, this stuff is fantastic. I see why it's $30 a bottle. However, they did have it on tap at the tap room. No, at the bottle works, rather. It is 9.4% ABV with 30 IBUs. 
I'm pretty sure you can get the bottles not just in the St. Louis area. It's kind of this special release that they're doing. There's only a limited number in certain areas. So if you see it, grab it. Yes, it's a little expensive, but sometimes you have to pay a little extra for a fantastic brew. My God, this is my favorite stout they've ever made. It is amazing. It is a next league above all their other stouts. And their stouts are fantastic. I like stouts. They're very good. And this looks like it'd be right up my alley. Out of 293 ratings, it's averaging 4.41 out of 5. So people are liking it. I gave it it. a 5. I I could not walk away from that not thinking it was a Mm 5. You know, there are very few beers that I give fives to but when I do it is well deserved in my opinion and they're well usually stouts so I I love stouts Mm -hmm. I will admit that whenever I first read the description that you had just read where it said a stout aged in port barrels with the finest cocoa nibs for some reason the R was not in there so I'm like stout aged in pot barrels what (laughs) like what is this what kind of drink is this this is the uh, the funny drink. Right, this is the 420 drink. Anyway, it it's definitely sounds like something that I'd be interested in sampling. I thought that I had missed out on this and that I would never get to try it, but again, it was on tap. Uh, a single pour of this is $12, so it is not cheap, but right. it's one of those like, well, it might be the only time I get to try this, so let's do it. Mm-hmm. So an American Imperial Double Stout. Mm-hmm. High ABV does not taste like it. No, some of them higher ABVs, man. It you get that on your palate, and you're like, whoa, okay, it's the it tricks you. There's definitely some alcohol there, but it was delicious. So highly recommended if you find it. All right, well that does it for this episode of the Tech Informist. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to us sometimes ramble and hopefully inform you of some things that you may or may not have known and give some perspective and. We hope nobody's offended, so I'm not trying to do this, oh, mass apology time. But no, it's okay to have opinions, and it's okay to have discussions. That's what the world is about. It's just can't like let friendships and things like that ruin get ruined. Yeah, and that's kind of, I guess, the point I do want to drive home. I have many friends that are of uh, the opposite political leaning that I am, and guess what? We're like best friends. It can happen, yeah, <laughs> believe it, it or not. Yeah, it but I also appreciate their view of the world because they sometimes bring stuff to the table that I don't think about. Mm-hmm. So maybe I try consider to be, that. Yes, I try to be one of those people that looks at both sides of the story because there's usually a reason why people do what they do. Exactly. You just have to try to see it and go, yeah, I can kind of see why they would do that. It might not make sense to you. It might not follow your beliefs. But depending on what it is, now obviously somebody going around killing people, that's like, oh, that's just not something I can get on board with. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, within reason, there's there's things that's like, eh, I could see why that's like that or they're like that and why they think like that. Anyway, let us know what you think, and if you've got anything that you feel that we should take a look at for apps and entertainment, whether books or movies or TV shows or games and things like that, let us know when we're always looking for feedback on items that we've talked about. And you can do that via email, contact at thetechinformist.com, or via Twitter at techinformist, at Kevin Bell, at holy underscore shadows, and again, Keep up with us on Instagram because we're both a little bit more active on Instagram, it seems like, than almost anywhere else at the moment. I'm trying to get back into Twitter as much as I can. It's tough to do when I'm stuck editing a whole bunch of podcasts. Yeah. But that's part of the life. That's part of the job. You know, It's not like a surgeon can sit here and be on Twitter all day while he's in the middle of operating on patients. <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing. And that is also Kevin underscore Harvell, and I believe it's Holy Shadows for you, or is it Holy underscore Shadows there? Holy well? underscore Shadows, because I don't believe they allow the space to be a character. Uh, so that's where the underscore comes in. Right. Join us, follow us, like us, and Talk share things us. out. Yeah, let's just have discussions and stuff like that. I like following people, so if you've got 
Instagram accounts you think I might be interested in, let me know. I'd mm-hmm. like to take a look at it when Instagram and their ridiculous timeline algorithm doesn't keep showing me things from three or four days ago. I know that person's posted new stuff because they're active. I don't want to see things three days ago. I want to see things now. That does it. Until next time, consider yourself informed. We're out. Bye-bye.